Hey guys, this is Kathy here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's World. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today is all about books. Today we're going to do a five book reading wrap up. And here's four of my books. I did one audible read. So let's just get started. We're going to start with this one. The Thursday Murder Club. It's been a while since I've read this. So I'm going to try to remember what I've read and I'm going to refer to my computer to help me. So it's The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. The genre is thriller, mystery fiction, mystery thriller. Goodreads gave it 4.03 stars, and I gave it 3.75 stars. Here's the overview I found on Amazon. In a peaceful retirement village, four unlikely friends meet weekly in the jigsaw room to discuss unsolved crimes. Together they call themselves The Thursday Murder Club. When a local developer is found dead with a mysterious photograph left next to his body, the Thursday Murder Club suddenly finds themselves in the middle of their first live case. As the bodies begin to pile up, can an unorthodox but brilliant gang catch the killer before it's too late? Here's a quote I liked. The sun is up, the skies are blue, and murder is in the air. Murder is all they really seem to talk about. They were obsessed with murder in this book. My thoughts before reading the book was, I actually thought it'd be funny. I looked at it as like a cozy murder mystery at a retirement village, a group of people getting get together to solve murders, kind of benign. As far as my thoughts after reading the book, when I first started this book, I got really bored. I still think a lot of times a book judgment has to do on the mood of we the readers. And I tried to get into it. I was really tired that night, I remember, and I thought, oh, this is going on forever. So I thought I'm gonna DNF it, I just can't take it. But then I thought back to all the good reviews, and I have no trouble DNFing a book. If I, I don't want to waste my time on something I really don't like. But I wanted to give it one more shot, and I'm glad I did, because I did finish the book, and it's, it's a sweet little book. How can a murder mystery be sweet, you ask? I, I kind of fell in love with the people. Basically, it's like the synopsis said. You have these four people who are in the murder club, and their spouses you learn about, and you also have a, two police officers that are highly involved in the cases, and they kind of come together to try to solve these murders. You get in a little trouble along the way. You're going to meet Joyce, Ron, Elizabeth, and Ibrahim. They're residents of this community. You'll also meet Penny, who is a police officer, and Chris, who is her boss. He's also a police officer. So it's an interesting cast of characters. There is one person who, I think I've got the names right, but um, she was a retired police officer. I guess she'd been at the retirement village, and she went into kind of like a coma, and so several of the residents would go to her and talk to her about these cases. I mean, she didn't respond, but they would talk to her about these cases. So you learn about the residents, you learn about people around the village, and it's a cute book. And it was slow at times, and that drives me a little crazy. I don't typically enjoy slow books. But it was, it was what I would consider a cozy read. And I couldn't give it four stars because it was just too slow for me. I did find a book trailer, which I put on my blog, and it appears, from what I could find, I was looking for a potential movie for this book, and it looks like Steven Spielberg has bought the rights to the book, so it looks like he may be directing a movie based on this book, which I think would be pretty good. I've got a link to the book trailer on my blog, as well as a link to the article about Steven Spielberg buying the rights. You know me and my middle grade books, I tend to enjoy them sometimes more than I do the adult books. What does that say about me? I don't know. Mutt's Promise. Here you have these dogs running. You've got a red truck there and a dog in the truck. You've got chipmunks. This is by Julie Solomon. Genre is middle grade fiction, animals, and I'll tell you the animals can talk. Not to the humans, but to one another. Goodreads gave it 3.79 stars. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I do have a link to Amazon if you're interested in this book, but I got it, as you can see, a little dot, they always mar it. I got it from the book outlet, so I got it a lot cheaper than what they're asking for on Amazon. So here's the synopsis. Luna is a farm puppy who loves to dance and has only known a happy, serene life surrounded by her mother, Mutt, and her siblings, and cared for by Gilberto, the son of farm workers. But now Gilberto and his parents have moved on, and Mr. Thomas the farmer doesn't feel he can take care of a whole family of dogs. He finds new homes for the puppies, not realizing that the man who took Luna and her brother does not have their best interest at heart. Luna and Chef, hungry and scared, are trapped in the smelly barn of a puppy mill until they take matters into their own paws and find a way of escape. 
But can Luna and Chief find their way home? I was kind of attracted to the book cover. I thought these dogs were happy and running through the woods and just, you know, la la la. That's not the case. They had been in a puppy mill and they were escaping. Two of the dogs are mutts puppies. One is a dog they befriended in the puppy mill. The truck, I think that's the bad guy trying to find them. The picture on the front is not as happy-go-lucky as I had thought. It starts off right away in the book. Mutt is out wandering. I don't know where Mutt came from. I guess he was just a stray dog, or she. And she's out wandering, and she hears all this commotion, and she runs to the sound and finds that a cat's being attacked by a, a weasel, they call it, or a fisher cat. And he scares off the weasel. The farmer who owns the cat comes out, sees that his cat's been rescued, and kind of opens his home to Mutt. Well, Mutt gets pregnant and has all these lovely puppies. There's also a farm family on this farm that come in and help work the farm several times a year. And that's where you meet Gilberto. He's a boy who loves these dogs. Gilberto and his family leave at a certain season. So it leaves the farmer, the cat, the chicken, who's very friendly, and all these puppies and he didn't know what to do with them. So he gave two away to a nice family and then he gave two away to somebody he thought, although in his gut, he wondered, but he thought he was a good man, but only to find out they were being taken to a puppy mill. So as you can see, they try to escape the puppy mill. Do they escape? I can't tell you that. You have to read the book. So there's twists and turns in here and it seems like everybody who kind of gets lost in the beginning comes back together at the end. So it's a sweet little book. I couldn't find a book trailer and I could not find anything as far as a movie related to this book, although they could make a cute kids movie. Book number three. It's been a while since I've read this book. So I'm going to try to remember parts of it. I was looking over it yesterday. I thought, oh yeah, that happened. Oh, I forgot that happened. This is Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew Sullivan. It's mystery, fiction, thriller. Goodreads gave it 3.79 stars. I gave it 3.5 stars. And I'm not even exactly sure why I did. Must have been a little slow. You know how I am. All right, here's the overview. When a bookshop patron commits suicide, his favorite store clerk must unravel the puzzle he left behind in this intriguingly dark, twisty debut novel from an award-winning short story writer. Lydia Smith lives her life hiding in plain sight. A clerk at the Bright Ideas bookstore, she keeps a meticulously crafted existence among her beloved books. But when Joey, a young, beguiling book frog, kills himself in the bookstore's upper room, Lydia's life becomes unplugged. Always Joey's favorite bookseller, Lydia has been bequeathed his meager, worldly possessions. Trinkets and books. But when Lydia flips through the books, she finds them defaced in ways both disturbing and inexplicable. They reveal the psyche of a young man on the verge of emotional reckoning. And they seem to contain a hidden message. What did Joey know? And what does it have to do with Lydia? And this is in the very first chapter. So she goes, she hears a commotion upstairs as they're closing the bookstore. She goes upstairs to check it out, thinking it's just one of the book frogs being loud. And she finds Joey, who she did care about, hanging. She tried to save him initially, but realized she couldn't. And as she was letting go of him, because she tried to lift him up, she noticed hanging out of his pocket a photograph, an old photograph. And it was of her at a birthday party. So now she's thinking, what is my connection with this book frog? And you go back into her life too, and she went through some major trauma in her life too. Like she was kind of in denial about what had happened to her. She read about Lydia's history, and she was involved in a violent event, and it was very bad when she was younger. And they talk about that and how it all comes full circle in the end. The quote that I liked was, she was all about silencing the past. I do that too. <laughs> How did I get this? I think because there were books on the cover, and you know I love books. So I thought, and it had gotten good reviews, so I thought, well, maybe this is the book for me. I don't know why I was thinking it might be a funny book. It really isn't funny, because um, there is murder, there's violence, there's denial, there's fear. So it's not a cozy murder mystery. It is more of a thriller in a way, although it was kind of slow at times. As far as a book trailer, I couldn't find a book trailer and I couldn't find any information on a movie for this book. Book four. I gave this a five. It's so cute. The Boy and the Giant. It's by David Litchfield. Genre is children's fiction, children's picture book. Goodreads gave it 4.38 stars and I gave it five out of five. It's just 
the illustrations are lovely. I got tearful at the end. Here's the overview from Amazon. There's a secret giant in Gableville who has hands the size of tabletops, legs as long as drain pipes, and feet as big as rowing boats. But little Billy thinks the giant is a tall tale that his granddad likes to tell. According to granddad, the giant keeps the bears away when they go camping, rescues Billy's favorite kite when it gets tangled in the tallest tree. Granddad swears the giant is real, but Billy's not buying it. Why has he never seen the giant before? Why does the giant stay hidden? Granddad knows why. People are afraid of things that are different. When Billy suddenly finds himself face to face with a giant, he runs away in fear and hurts the giant's feelings. But now he's got an opportunity to make it up to him and just maybe to be friends with the nicest guy in town. And it's good. It, it talks about he's a wonderful guy, but he's different and so people are afraid of him. And it shows all the things that he does within the community to help people. And then at the very end, something happens and he's accepted and it's just sweet. It's very sweet. I think I got this at the book outlet also. You know me, I'm always trying to find deals. I guess the moral of the story is just because somebody's different doesn't mean they're not wonderful. So great book, great illustrations. Let's see if I can show you some. I mean, it's just really, really well done. Colorful. And there we go. So good book. I would highly recommend it. And I couldn't find a trailer on it, and I couldn't find a movie related to it. My final book. This is the one I listened to on Audible. The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Haro. Genres fantasy, historical fiction, paranormal. Goodreads gave it 4.09. Stars out of 5 stars, I gave it 3. Most of the reviews I've seen have been, they love this book, they're ecstatic about it. They give it 5 stars. I'm beginning to see more people, more like me, who DNF'd it. They just couldn't get into it. They thought it was slow. And I tried, I probably listened to 75% of the book. That's a lot. And I found myself mind wandering. I mean, the narrator was great. I loved her voice. It was very soothing, maybe too much so. But, and the book was good. I liked the sisters in the book. And yes, there's witches in the book. But I just could not get into it. Um, I, I didn't care. So I DNF'd it, but I did give it three stars because it was well written. The writing style was actually very pretty at times. Here's a little synopsis for you. In 1893, there's no such thing as witches. There used to be in the wild, dark days before the burnings began, but now witching is nothing but tidy charms and nursery rhymes. If the modern woman wants any measure of power, she must find it at the ballot box. But when the Eastwood sisters, James Juniper, Agnes something, Beatrice Belladonna join the suffragists of New Salem, they begin to pursue the forgotten words and ways that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement. Stalked by shadows and sickness, haunted by forces who will not suffer a witch to vote, perhaps not even to live, the sisters will need to delve into the oldest magics, draw new alliances, and heal the bond between them if they want to survive. There's no such thing as witches, but there will be. Here's a quote. Because it's easy to ignore a woman, Juniper's lips twist in a feral smile, but a hell of a lot harder to ignore a witch. I only decided to read that book because it got such amazing reviews. You got the three sisters. They have witchcraft in their history. Their grandmother, they talk about their grandmother a lot, but no one was practicing it now. You have the women's suffrage movement, and you have women being treated badly by men. The suffrage movement tries to give some power to the women through the vote. And the witches movement tries to give some power through, to the women through witchcraft. They're both trying to get independence, but they're both trying to get it in a different way. So it talks about the lives of mainly the three sisters and the people they encounter. I did find a book trailer, which I put on my blog, and I could not find anything about a movie. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books and if you like them and if you totally disagree with me, I'd love to especially hear something your opinion on the once and future witches because I really 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 wanted to love that book so that's it for my five book reading wrap-up you guys take care and happy reading and I'll see you next time bye bye mm -hmm.